Hello everyone. Stephen Paul Jobs, February 24, 1955 to October 5, 2011, was an American businessman, investor, and philanthropist. He was the co-founder, chairman, and CEO of Apple, the chairman and majority shareholder of Pixar, a member of the Walt Disney Company's board of directors following its acquisition of Pixar, and the founder, chairman, and CEO of Next. Jobs was born in San Francisco to a Syrian father and German-American mother. He was adopted shortly after his birth. Jobs would bristle when Paul and Clara were referred to as his adoptive parents, and he regarded them as his parents, 1,000 percent. In September 1972, Jobs enrolled at Reed College in Portland, Oregon. After just one semester, Jobs dropped out of Reed College without telling his parents. He continued to attend by auditing his classes, including a course on calligraphy that was taught by Robert Palladino. In a 2005 commencement speech at Stanford University, Jobs stated that during this period, he slept on the floor in friends' dorm rooms, returned Coke bottles for food money, and got weekly free meals at the local Hare Krishna temple. In that same speech, Jobs said, If I had never dropped in on that single calligraphy course in college, the Mac would have never had multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. In February 1974, Jobs returned to his parents' home in Los Altos and began looking for a job. He was soon hired by Atari, Inc. in Los Gatos, California, as a technician. Jobs traveled to India in mid-1974 to visit Neem Karoli Baba at his Kanchi ashram with his Reed friend, an eventual Apple employee, Daniel Kotke, searching for spiritual enlightenment. When they got to the Neem Karoli ashram, it was almost deserted because Neem Karoli Baba had died in September 1973. Then they made a long trek up a dry riverbed to an ashram of Haida Khan Babaji. After seven months, Jobs left India and returned to the U.S. ahead of Daniel Kotke. Jobs had changed his appearance. His head was shaved, and he wore traditional Indian clothing. B.S. returned to Atari in early 1975, and that summer, Bushnell assigned him to create a circuit board for the arcade video game Breakout in as few chips as possible, knowing that Jobs would recruit Wozniak for help. During his day job at HP, Wozniak drew sketches of the circuit design. At night, he joined Jobs at Atari and continued to refine the design, which Jobs implemented on a breadboard. According to Bushnell, Atari offered $100, equivalent to about $500 in 2021, for each TTL chip that was eliminated in the machine. Jobs made a deal with Wozniak to split the fee evenly between them if Wozniak could minimize the number of chips. Much to the amazement of Atari engineers, within four days Wozniak reduced the TTL count to 45, far below the usual 100, though Atari later re-engineered it to make it easier to test and add a few missing features. Jobs and Wozniak attended meetings of the Homebrew Computer Club in 1975, which was a stepping stone to the development and marketing of the first Apple computer. By March 1976, Wozniak completed the basic design of the Apple I computer and showed it to Jobs, who suggested that they sell it. Wozniak was at first skeptical of the idea but later agreed. In April of that same year, Jobs, Wozniak, and administrative overseer Ronald Wayne founded Apple Computer Company, now called Apple Inc., as a business partnership in Jobs's parents' Christ Drive home on April 1, 1976. The operation originally started in Jobs's bedroom and later moved to the garage. Jobs originally planned to produce bare printed circuit boards of the Apple I and sell them to computer hobbyists for $50, equivalent to about $240 in 2021, each. To fund the first batch, Wozniak sold his HP Scientific Calculator and Jobs sold his Volkswagen van. Later that year, computer retailer Paul Terrell purchased 50 fully assembled Apple I units for $500 each. Eventually about 200 Apple I computers were produced in total. Later that year, computer retailer Paul Terrell purchased 50 fully assembled Apple I units for $500 each. Eventually about 200 Apple I computers were produced in total. 
They received funding from a then semi-retired Intel product marketing manager and engineer Mike Markula. Scott McNeely, one of the co-founders of Sun Microsystems, said that Jobs broke a glass age ceiling in Silicon Valley because he'd created a very successful company at a young age. Markula brought Apple to the attention of Arthur Rock, which after looking at the crowded Apple booth at the homebrew computer show, started with a $60,000 investment and went on the Apple board. Jobs was not pleased when Markula recruited Mike Scott from National Semiconductor in February 1977 to serve as the first president and CEO of Apple. In April 1977, Jobs and Wozniak introduced the Apple II at the West Coast Computer Fair. It is the first consumer product to have been sold by Apple Computer. The Apple II became one of the first highly successful mass-produced microcomputer products in the world. Jobs' girlfriend Brennan gave birth to her baby, Lisa Brennan Jobs, on May 17, 1978. Jobs worked with his team to come up with the phrase, Local Integrated Software Architecture, as an alternative explanation for the Apple Lisa. Decades later, however, Jobs admitted to his biographer Walter Isaacson that, obviously, it was named for my daughter. In 1978, at age 23, Jobs was worth over $1 million, equivalent to $4.15 million in 2021. By age 25, his net worth grew to an estimated $250 million, equivalent to $745 million in 2021. He was also one of the youngest people ever to make the Forbes list of the nation's richest people, and one of only a handful to have done it themselves, without inherited wealth. In 1982, Jobs bought an apartment on the top two floors of the San Remo, a Manhattan building with a politically progressive reputation. Although he never lived there, he spent years renovating it thanks to I.M. Pei. In 2003, he sold it to U2 singer Bono. In 1983, Jobs lured John Scully away from Pepsi Cola to serve as Apple's CEO, asking, Do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water? or do you want a chance to change the world? In 1984, Jobs bought the Jackaling House and Estate, and resided there for a decade. On January 22, 1984, Apple aired a Super Bowl television commercial titled, 1984, which ended with the words, On January 24, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh. And you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. However, its low performance and limited range of available software led to a rapid sales decline in the second half of 1984. Scully's and Jobs's respective visions for the company greatly differed. Scully favored open architecture computers like the Apple II, targeting education, small business, and home markets less vulnerable to IBM. Jobs wanted the company to focus on the closed architecture Macintosh as a business alternative to the IBM PC. President and CEO Scully had little control over chairman of the board Jobs's Macintosh division. It and the Apple II division operated like separate companies, duplicating services. Although its products provided 85% of Apple's sales in early 1985, the company's January 1985 annual meeting did not mention the Apple II division or employees. By early 1985, the Macintosh's failure to defeat the IBM PC became clear, and it strengthened Scully's position in the company. In May 1985, Scully, encouraged by Arthur Rock, decided to reorganize Apple, and proposed a plan to the board that would remove jobs from the Macintosh group and put him in charge of new product development. In response, Jobs then developed a plan to get rid of Scully and take over Apple. However, Jobs was confronted after the plan was leaked, and he said that he would leave Apple. The board declined his resignation and asked him to reconsider. Scully also told Jobs that he had all of the votes needed to go ahead with the reorganization. A few months later, on September 17, 1985, Jobs submitted a letter of resignation to the Apple board. Five additional senior Apple employees also resigned and joined Jobs in his new venture, Next. The Macintosh's struggle continued after Jobs left Apple. 
Windows-based IBM PC clones also led to the development of additional GUIs such as IBM's TopView or Digital Research's GEM. And thus, the graphical user interface was beginning to be taken for granted. Undermining the most apparent advantage of the Mac. It seemed clear as the 1980s wound down that Apple couldn't go it alone indefinitely against the whole IBM clone market. Following his resignation from Apple in 1985, Jobs founded Next Inc. with $7 million. A year later he was running out of money, and he sought venture capital with no product on the horizon. Jobs attracted the attention of billionaire Ross Perot, who invested heavily in the company. Next workstations were first released in 1990 and priced at $9,999, equivalent to about $21,000 in 2021. Like the Apple Lisa, the Next workstation was technologically advanced and designed for the education sector, but was largely dismissed as cost prohibitive. Jobs marketed Next products to the financial, scientific, and academic community, highlighting its innovative, experimental new technologies such as the mock kernel, the digital signal processor chip, and the built-in Ethernet port. Making use of a next computer, English computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web in 1990 at CERN in Switzerland. The revised, second-generation NextCube was released in 1990. Jobs touted it as the first, interpersonal, computer that would replace the personal computer. With its innovative NEXT mail multimedia email system, Nextcube could share voice, image, graphics, and video in email for the first time. Interpersonal computing is going to revolutionize human communications and group work, Jobs told reporters. In 1993, after having sold only 50,000 machines, Next transitioned fully to software development with the release of NextStep, Intel. The company reported its first yearly profit of $1.03 million in 1994. In 1996, Next Software, Inc. released Web Objects, a framework for web application development. After Next was acquired by Apple Inc. in 1997, Web Objects was used to build and run the Apple Store, Mobile Me Services, and the iTunes Store. In 1986, Jobs funded the spin-out of the graphics group, later renamed Pixar, from Lucasfilm's computer graphics division for the price of $10 million, $5 million of which was given to the company as capital and $5 million of which was paid to Lucasfilm for technology rights. The first film produced by Pixar with its Disney partnership, Toy Story, 1995, with Jobs credited as executive producer, brought financial success and critical acclaim to the studio when it was released. The first film produced by Pixar with its Disney partnership, Toy Story, 1995, with Jobs credited as executive producer, brought financial success and critical acclaim to the studio when it was released. Over the course of Jobs's life, under Pixar's creative chief John Lasseter, the company produced box office hits. A Bug's Life, 1998, Toy Story 2, 1999, Monsters, Inc., 2001, Finding Nemo, 2003, The Incredibles, 2004, Cars, 2006, Ratatouille, 2007, Wally, -E, 2008, Up, 2009, Toy Story 3, 2010, Cars 2, 2011, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Ratatouille, Wall E, Up, Toy Story 3, and Brave each received the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. In October 2005, Bob Iger replaced Eisner at Disney, and Iger quickly worked to mend relations with Jobs and Pixar. On January 24, 2006, Jobs and Iger announced that Disney had agreed to purchase Pixar in an all-stock transaction worth $7.4 billion. When the deal closed, Jobs became the Walt Disney Company's largest single shareholder with approximately 7% of the company's stock. Jobs's holdings in Disney far exceeded those of Disney family member Roy E. Disney who until his 2009 death held about 1% of the company's stock. Upon completion of the merger, Jobs received 7% of Disney shares, and joined the board of directors as the largest individual shareholder. 
Upon Jobs's death, his shares in Disney were transferred to the Stephen P. Jobs Trust led by Loreen Jobs. In 1996, Apple announced that it would buy Next for $400 million. The deal was finalized in February 1997, bringing Jobs back to the company he had co-founded. Jobs became de facto chief after then-CEO Gil Emilio was ousted in July 1997. He was formally named interim chief executive on September 16. In March 1998, to concentrate Apple's efforts on returning to profitability, Jobs terminated several projects, such as Newton, CyberDog, and OpenDoc. Jobs changed the licensing program for Macintosh clones, making it too costly for the manufacturers to continue making machines. With the purchase of Next, much of the company's technology found its way into Apple products, most notably NextStep, which evolved into Mac OS X. Under Jobs's guidance, the company increased sales significantly with the introduction of the iMac and other new products. Since then, appealing designs and powerful branding have worked well for Apple. At the 2000 Macworld Expo, Jobs officially dropped the interim modifier from his title at Apple and became permanent CEO. Jobs quipped at the time that he would be using the title ICEO. The company subsequently branched out, introducing and improving upon other digital appliances. With the introduction of the iPod Portable Music Player, iTunes Digital Music Software, and the iTunes Store, the company made forays into consumer electronics and music distribution. On June 29, 2007, Apple entered the cellular phone business with the introduction of the iPhone, a multi-touch display cell phone, which also included the features of an iPod and, with its own mobile browser, revolutionized the mobile browsing scene. Jobs had a public war of words with Dell Computer CEO Michael Dell, starting in 1987, when Jobs first criticized Dell for making uninnovative beige boxes. On October 6, 1997, at a Gartner symposium, when Dell was asked what he would do if he ran the then-troubled Apple computer company, he said, I'd shut it down and give the money back to the shareholders. Then, in 2006, Jobs emailed all employees when Apple's market capitalization rose above Dell's. It read, Team, it turned out that Michael Dell wasn't perfect at predicting the future. Based on today's stock market close, Apple is worth more than Dell. Stocks go up and down, and things may be different tomorrow, but I thought it was worth a moment of reflection today. Steve Jobs usually went to work wearing a black long-sleeved mock turtleneck made by Issey Miyake, Levi's 501 blue jeans, and New Balance 991 sneakers. In 2006, he further expanded Apple's recycling programs to any U.S. customer who buys a new Mac. This program includes shipping and environmentally friendly disposal of their old systems. The success of Apple's unique products and services provided several years of stable financial returns, propelling Apple to become the world's most valuable publicly traded company in 2011. In October 2003, Jobs was diagnosed with cancer. In mid-2004, he announced to his employees that he had a cancerous tumor in his pancreas. On January 17, 2011, a year and a half after Jobs returned to work following the liver transplant, Apple announced that he had been granted a medical leave of absence. Jobs announced his leave in a letter to employees, stating his decision was made, so he could focus on his health. As it did at the time of his 2009 medical leave, Apple announced that Tim Cook would run day-to-day -day operations and that Jobs would continue to be involved in major strategic decisions at the company. While on leave, Jobs appeared at the iPad 2 launch event on March 2, the WWDC keynote introducing iCloud on June 6, and before the Cupertino City Council on June 7. On August 24, 2011, Jobs announced his resignation as Apple's CEO, writing to the board, I have always said if there ever came a day when I could no longer meet my duties and expectations as Apple's CEO, I would be the first to let you know. Unfortunately, that day has come. Jobs became chairman of the board and named Tim Cook as his successor as CEO. Jobs continued to work for Apple until the day before his death six weeks later. Thanks for watching.
Please like, comment, share and subscribe.